This video looks at the derivation of the chain rule. First few videos then introduced differentiation from first principles and in particular showed how you could therefore derive the product and the quotient rules. Another commonly used rule is the chain rule or sometimes you'll see people call it function of a function rule. So this video is going to explain the origins of the change rule so that students can understand it better. If you're not interested in derivations and origins, you can go straight to resources 11 where some worked examples are given. So what is a function of a function? So consider the following two examples. I've got f of x, which is sine x, and g of x, which is x squared. Now from these, I can create two different functions. For example, I can write h of x is f of g of x, or in other words, because f is sine, I get sine of g of x, or sine x squared. Alternatively, I can do k of x is g of f of x, which means I get sine x all squared or sine squared x. So these are called functions of a function because you can see that f here has got as its argument another function g of x or g here has got as its argument another function f of x. So therefore the terminology function of a function should be clear. So objective. Are there simple methods for obtaining the derivative of a function of or a function? Or oh, indeed, you'll get examples where you get function of a function of a function and so on. So in order to do this, we're going to go back to the basic definition we gave in the very first videos, which is to say that the derivative is defined using this limiting for formula. So dy dx is the limit as delta x goes to zero of y of x plus delta x minus y of x of x plus delta x minus x. So let's see if we can apply this to a function of a function. So here we're going to apply it to f of g of x. So if we apply the limiting value for differentiation we get dh dx is the limit as delta x goes to zero of h of x plus delta x minus h of x over x plus delta x minus x. Now I happen to know that what we're actually doing in h is we've got f of g of x. So I can replace h of x plus delta x is actually f of g of x plus delta x. So that's what I've done down here. So okay, so I've replaced h by f of g in both places where h has appeared. So you see I've now got the limit as delta x goes to zero of f of g of x plus delta x minus f of g of x. Now, you remember again from some earlier videos that because of this limiting formula we've got from differentiation, then g of x plus delta x equals g of x plus dg dx delta x. And so what I can do is I can substitute this into the derivative I had on the previous page. And you'll notice, by the way, that I can also write it in this form here. Delta g equals dg dx delta x, because delta g is simply the difference between these two terms, g of x plus delta x minus g of x. So if I make that substitution, this is what I had on the previous page and you'll see what I've done is I've replaced g of x plus delta x as g of x plus delta g. You notice the subtle difference there, look at the position of the brackets. So g of x plus delta x is actually g of x plus delta g. So this term here is delta g. So, what have we got next? Well, consider the derivative of the function f of x. So again, if you went to first principles, you'd find the limit as delta g goes to zero of f of g plus delta g equals f of g times df dg delta g. So again, that's the definition of derivative from first principles. Now, why have I done that? Because I've got this term f of g plus delta g, and I want to basically replace it 
with these two terms here. So that's what I'm going to do, substitute into the previous page. So what I now get is dh dx is the limit as delta x goes to zero of f of g plus delta g minus f of g over delta x. And then what I'm going to do is take this term here and replace it with this term here. And that's what I've done down here. And now, of course, what you'll see happens is I have two terms which cancel. So what I get is dh dx is the limit as delta x goes to zero of df dg delta g over delta x. And then finally, we can replace for delta g as delta g equals dg dx over delta x because we're still talking about limiting values. And so what do you get? dh dx is the limit as delta x goes to zero of df dg dg dx and then you'll see these two delta x's cancel and so you end up with your formula dh dx equals df dg dg dx and this is called the chain rule so h is f of g of x then what do you do you differentiate f with respect to g and then you differentiate g with respect to x. Now what if functions are nested multiple times over? It's straightforward to show, and we're not going to derive it, that you can get a similar sort of formula. So if you've got h is a function of g and g is a function of k, then if you want dh dx you go df dg because f is a function of g, dg dk because g is a function of k, dk dx because k is a function of x, and you just multiply them all together. So it's called the chain rule, because they're all basically multiplied in a chain. What if you've got four nested functions? So here you can see f is a function of g, g is a function of k, k is a function of w. So again, you simply do it in order. I get df dg, because f is a function of g, dg dk, because g is a function of k, dk dw, because k is a function of w, times dw dx. So it's called the chain rule as each function is differentiated in order like a chain where the order is obviously linked to the nesting. So here's a simple example. Find the derivative of h of x which is given by f of g of x where f of x is sine x and g of x is x squared. So from the chain rule the derivative dh dx is going to be df dg times dg dx. So let's calculate each of these terms in turn. So first of all, f is sine g. So df dg from the table is just cos g. g is x squared, so dg dx is 2x. So in other words, dh dx is simply this, cos g times 2x. Now it so happens that because I know g is x squared I can replace cos g as cos x squared if I want. So the answer now becomes 2x cos x squared. Different example. Find the derivative of h of x. Now what I've got is that f is a function of g, it's tan 2g. g is a function of w, it's log 3w, and w is a function of x, it's e to the 2x plus 1, and so what I've got is h of x is f of g of w of x, and you can see all the nesting down here if you want the full function. So, from the chain rule, I'm going to get dh dx is going to be df dg, because f is a function of g, times gg dw, because g is a function of w, times dw dx, because w is a function of x. So f was tan 2g, so df dg is 2 sec squared 2g. g was log 3w, so dg dw is 1 over w. w is e to the 2x plus 1, so dw dx is 2e to the 2x. So now I just plug all these values straight into this formula, and there's your answer. dh dx is 2 sec squared 2g times 1 over w times 2e to the 2x. Now of course 
I could substitute in if I wanted. I could say, look, I happen to know what W is. It's e to the 2x plus 1. So I could put that in there if I want it in terms of x. And similarly, I happen to know that g of w is log 3w. So if I wanted, I can substitute that g in there and then again substitute in for x. So if I want to, I can get it all back in terms of x. So, an easy shorthand to remember for simple functions of functions is given below. So if you had something like h equals sine u and you know that u is a function of x, then here's my chain rule. dh dx equals dh du times du dx. So you get cos u du dx. You'll notice here I haven't defined what u is. I just know that u is a function of x. So I can use the chain rule and get the structure of the answer. If h equals cos u, again, same formula, dh dx is dh du, du dx, so you get shine u, du dx. Or if h equals log u, then you'll get dh dx is 1 over u, du dx. So these are probably quite common examples where you might want to use the chain rule. So a summary. This brief resource has derived the chain rule for differentiating functions that are nested expressions of other functions. So for example, if you had something like h equals f of g of k of w of x, then dh dx would be df dg, dg dk, dk dw, dw dx. And in the next video, we'll give a number of worked examples.